Well, this is new. Can everyone hear me? Yeah? Um, so I lost my voice, so I'm glad you've all got headphones on. Um, but my name is Colby Short. Uh, I'm the CEO of Get Agent, the estate agent comparison site. We use property sales data to help identify the top performing agents in a particular area based on metrics such as how many properties they sell, uh, the percentage of asking price they achieve, and how long they take to sell each property. Obviously, as a business, we generate a lot of data. And uh, lately, we've been looking into the online agency space. And Gary has asked me to come along and share some of our findings today. Let me begin with the obligatory show of hands from the audience. Do we have any online or hybrid agents in the room? I'll avoid you after. Do we have any traditional agents in the room? OK, good. Hands up if you think online agents. We, it, online hybrid, we're just going to call them online agents for the, for the sake of this. Hands up if you think online agents have done a good job. Hands up if you think they've done a bad job. Interesting. Right. So there's a couple of ways to decide whether uh, people have done a good job or not. The first way is to look at kind of returning funds to, uh, to their investors. And over the last 12 months, there's been a big change in the share price of a couple of the bigger state agents. So countrywide, their shares have dropped by over 50%. LSL have dropped 30%. And in the same period, Purple Bricks have grown 81% and are now actually valued at £860 million, um, which is obviously dwarfs countrywide £391 million, uh, and LSL's £208 million. Obviously, there are lots of other online agents in the space, and they haven't seen anywhere near this level of growth. Um, but as they're private companies, we can't actually quantify that. But it's fair to say that Purple Bricks far, far outshines any of those. Another way to look at it is the market share. Now, you would have seen today's announcement by Purple Bricks that their uh, number of listings has grown quite considerably. Um, and you can see that over the last kind of three months, there's a spike there. Um, but over the last kind of two years, from January 2015 to now, the market share of online agents has grown from just over 1% uh, to where it is now, which is kind of just over 4.5%. It's tremendous growth. However, a lot of you won't be surprised to know that most of that has been led by Purple Bricks, with their market share since March 2015 having grown by 667%. A couple of other big winners during that time, Umove, which has grown by 112%, we definitely consider them a hybrid agent. Uh, How Simple, which has grown by 80%, and Yopa, which in March 2015 didn't even exist, which now has 0.29% of the market. Agents who have not performed so well comparatively at eMove, I was glad to know that Russell Quirk isn't in the audience today, um, who their market share has actually decreased by 5%, and House Network have seen a 50% fall uh, in those two years. Of these agents, oh, and less said about eMove, the better, easy property, the better, right? Of these agents, only Purple Bricks, um, sorry, of these agents, a lot of them are spending an awful lot of money on TV. In the last two years, Purple Bricks has spent £18 million on TV and radio advertising. £18 million. The other big spenders there are Yopa, who have spent £6 million, and How Simple, who have spent five. Tepelo have, have, uh, have spent a fair bit as well, with £4 million. Easy Property again. Then Emu have only spent a little bit, but most of their acquisition has been done by, offline, or by online channels. Of these agents, only Purple Bricks has really achieved what I would call a sustainable acquisition cost. Um, they're just looking, this is just the total number, total amount spent on TV divided by the number of listings. But as Purple Bricks uh, acquire the majority of their customers through TV, I think this is quite a fair representation of their acquisition cost, which is about 350 quid. We have to take our hats off to Purple Bricks. They've actually done quite a good job with their acquisition. Yopa, still early days, well over 2,000 pound. How simple, a bit more established, but still over £600. And easy property, again, over £2,000. These companies, these are not sustainable acquisition costs. But luckily for the likes of Yopa, How Simple, and maybe Easy Property, they have the financial backing from, uh, from their investors to sustain this amount of spend. With Purple Bricks having had success using TV and with other, estate, with other online agents showing that it is, a market, uh, it is an acquisition channel that can work, why haven't the traditional agents started to do more TV advertising themselves? This is why. 
countrywide, the largest estate agency by my number of branches and, and listings, I guess, in the country, is made up of many, many different brands. They've grown through acquiring these local and regional brands over the years and have leveraged the value of those local brands to build their business. However, what this does is it stops countrywide benefiting from that unified national brand advertising like Purple Bricks, like Yopa, and prevents them from doing the above the line marketing which has proved so successful in growing market share rapidly for those online agents. So I've asked myself, if I was the CEO of Countrywide, what would I do? And I thought, well, I'd just kill all of the brands. I'd just rebrand everything as Countrywide, and I'd spend millions of pounds launching a national TV advertising campaign. Why aren't, why aren't they doing that? And then someone told me why, and I realized why I'm not CEO of Countrywide. Countrywide's brand assets represent nearly 40% of its total asset value. So if Countrywide were to rebrand, they'd have to write the value of all of this off overnight. It's about 190 million pound. They simply could not afford to do it. So this is where online agents have the advantage and they're clearly making the most of it. But are online agents really doing a good job selling homes and are they doing a good job for homeowners? Every online, every online agent's page, homepage includes a calculator which will tell you how much you save by using an online agent. But there's always been a second side to this equation, which is whether or not the traditional agent will get you more for your property. It's an impossible question to answer because ultimately two properties are never quite the same. Uh, the market isn't the same. The, the condition of the property isn't the same. So it's impossible to say that he or she got more or less for that property. So how else can we look at the cost benefit of using a traditional agent? People have been asking for completion rates for forever and a day. Um, so we decided to do that research. At Get Agent, we looked at the properties that were listed by Purple Bricks, a sample of 500, all of the properties from House Simple, all of the properties from eMove, and all of the properties from Tepelo, listed in January 2016. So these properties have now had 14 months to sell. As you can see, Purple Bricks completed on just 57% of sales. How Simple fared the best, completing on 58%, while eMove and Tepelo were down at 51 and 48% respectively. That means over half of Tepelo's customers paid more than they would have if they used a no-win, no-fee agent. Just by paying something, even if it was a pound, over half people would pay more. 17% of their vendors, which is the yellow line, the yellow section, went on to use a high street agent afterwards anyway. So not only did they pay the money up front, they then got stung a second time on the commission. Looking at Purple Bricks, 43% of their customers didn't sell, meaning that almost half of their customers paid more than they would have done anyway. And these are people who were so keen to sell their property, they were prepared to part with a thousand pound up front. These aren't people who were just curious, putting their properties on the market to seeing what happened. These are motivated buyers showing an awful lot of intent. But how can this happen? And why is the completion rate much lower than the 68% shown by traditional agents? Especially when online agents like Purple Bricks give, my, give me my own local property expert to help me sell my home. We looked into thing, things a bit further by looking at the average area an LPE covers and found it was a whopping 600 kilometers squared. That's the same size as Birmingham. I would hardly call that local. As a comparison, a traditional agent's market uh, reach would probably only be about 25 square kilometers. Surely that'd be a simple problem to solve. We'll just hire more LPEs. Well, a Purple Bricks LPE only currently lists an average of 16 properties per month. That may be high compared to a traditional agent. But there is much less meat on the bone when you're looking at a Purple Bricks property sale. Purple Bricks charge about £700 plus VAT. £350 of that, we know on average, goes towards a TV acquisition. Then they've got other overheads, such as their, their management team, their, their internal progression that they do a tiny bit of, um, and all their other overheads. There's just not enough meat on the bone to keep paying, to pay enough money to the LPEs to be able to afford to give them a smaller patch and specialize more. So Purple Bricks can't afford to hire 
they might do it, they might just pay through the nose, but from a business perspective, they can't afford to hire more LPEs until their uh, density of, of instructions is much higher. Not only are the local property experts not local and lacking in useful market knowledge, homeowners also have to manage the progression of the sale themselves. They have to negotiate the price pretty much by themselves, all of which is time consuming and scary if you've not done it before. This all suggests that online agents may not be the super duper money saving solution that they were made out to be. But do homeowners even feel that estate agents are paid too much in the first place? Because that's the, that's the hypothesis that we're all working off of. So at Get Agent, we surveyed all of the customers that we recommended agents to. And we found that only 4% of the homeowners we suggested agents to felt that the estate agent was not, uh, was, was, was bad value for money, was not good value for money. So obviously at Get Agent, we're an estate agent comparison site, so we don't just refer customers to any old estate agent. These are the best estate agents. So there's a couple of things here. One is, the average fee quoted through our site is 1.35% plus VAT. So they're not, they're not the cheapest agents, and people were still happy with the money they paid. And the second thing is, I feel that this demonstrates that if you put someone with a good estate agent that has a good track record of selling property like yours well, they see the benefit in that. The well-funded single-brand online agents are making the most of a lack of advertising competition using efficient, above-the-line advertising but it's still a niche market. They're still only representing a tiny proportion of the market, despite the fact that they spent over 45 million pound cumulatively on TV spend in the last two years. But do, online, do people even want to use an online agent? Do they even have a product that people want? Or are they simply strong arming customers into using them with outsized marketing spend? Or is this simply a well thought out ruse to very quickly grow market share by standing out from the crowd, growing the brand awareness, and are we all gonna to start to see, the, see these on our high streets in years to come? Wouldn't that be a funny thing? They just establish 6% market share and then decide to just turn into a high street agent offering a full service for 1%? That could be an interesting, interesting ploy. Agate Agent, we believe in high street agents. We believe that someone that has proven success and selling properties like yours in your area well is the best person to help you sell your largest financial asset. The challenge is, who are those people? Some of you are in this room, so, but, there's, but there's thousands around the country. We already work with 5,300 of them around, around the country. So our plan is to do the TV advertising that other people can't, that the high street agents can't, even the corporates, let alone the independents, and allow people to focus on being the best estate agent they can be and help us show how that can help homeowners get the most money for their property and how going with an online agent is not the cheapest way for them to go. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for that. I think if you put your headset on yeah. and turn it on. Are we good to go? Yeah. Well, we'll see. All will be revealed. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions? Yes, one down here. Could we get the microphone over? Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, that was very interesting, but you didn't make your argument because you didn't tell us what percentage of properties that the existing estate agents have still got on the market to match the stats you showed of the online. So I have no idea whether you're doing a better job or a worse job. So, yes. The argument was not that they sell more properties and that their completion rate is higher. The argument is that if an estate agent doesn't sell the property, you don't pay them anything. So the argument was that 50% of the time, these, estate, these online agents who are claiming to be cheaper um, are actually much more expensive. So that, that's more the point. So we do know that completion rates of online agents are higher than that amount. They are around the 67, 68% mark. But we didn't include that in the talk because actually that's not the point we're trying to make. The point is that personally, I don't think online agents are estate agents. They hire the best negotiators, uh, not the best negotiators, the best uh, valuers from the, the, the traditional estate agents because these people are good at onboarding people 
to actually put their list their home with them and then the online agents do the advertising um, so th they're not actually selling the home so this is about people they're paying for this service of being able to sell their home themselves and they're not getting anything for it Any other, yep, question just there, thank you. Um, so you say local property expert, uh, a calculated probably earns Pebble Bricks about a quarter of a million pound a year. Um, that's for 16 properties, so if they double that at 13, it's probably half a million pound a year revenue to Pebble Bricks. Uh, we're from the rental sector, so I'm not too sure, but how much does uh, a standard sales negotiator bring into a traditional branch compared to Pebble Bricks? So, so if it's a quarter of a million pound of fee, fees per year for Purple Bricks, how does that compare to the traditional model? So, I, I mean, I didn't say the quarter of a million, so you must have got that So I calculated, rough, so about a grand and a half revenue per property sold for Purple Bricks, times 16, times 12. They, um, they charge about 800 pound. But, the, but the, the report recently was that it's about uh, 1,500 pound income yeah, per okay. Well, the well, that's not the people. These people, the, the local property experts, aren't going out and actually finding this business themselves, right? Yeah. They're just the closers, so they're only one part of the, of the actual cost of onboarding this business and actually managing the business. Um, what I'm talking about here is not necessarily their cost of sale, and is, is Purple Bricks a viable business? I, indeed, the, they're worth 860 million, right? Who am I to, to argue with that? They've delivered good value to to their shareholders, um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't have the data to answer your question, please. Okay. Hello, David here from Matterport. Um, I've noticed kind of over the last year or so, um, traditional agents tend to be buying online agents. Um, and also some traditional agents have also kind of incorporated the online um, kind of business model yeah. as well. Uh, what are your views on that? So it's an interesting one because Hatch2, I didn't actually include in here because their market share wasn't large enough to include on the, on the chart. Um, their market share is actually Apart from this month, which is the first growth they've had, their market share actually decreased after they were purchased by, by Connells. Um, obviously, Countrywide are rolling out this new, op this new offering, which is an online thing. Um, but if you read Countrywide's, I think it was an annual report, or one of their reports, they reported that when they were offering the online opportunity to their, to their prospective customers, what well, they actually found is that people weren't taking them up on that offer, but it was increasing the amount of customers that, that signed up to their, their standard offering. So I do think that having being tech savvy and being and being tech aware um, definitely does make you more appealing to to uh, to the homeowners. So I don't I don't think it's a bad idea for Countrywide to do that. But I, I think Countrywide are not doing it because they feel that online agency is the way to go. They're doing it as an acquisition play for their main business. So if anything, it's, it's a signal of how confident Countrywide are that online isn't the way to go. When when I first heard it, I thought. I think they're going to shoot themselves in the foot here, but they make it very, very clear in their TV advert that you come on this, come on to the, the online offering, and if you want to do the offline offering, we'll just, we'll just basically include that in the fee. So where do you think the uh, top end of the market will go? So the likes of Savills, Knight Frank, Strutton Parker. Uh, by the way, Kevin Powell from Strutton Parker. <laughs> Who are they? <laughs> no, so um, I think there was obviously an there was an obviously investment in Yopa, so I think they do appreciate that kind of. Um, I guess the difference is the top of the market. If it's two percent of a ten million pound house, you save an awful lot more money using an online agent than than if you were using a um, if it was a hundred thousand pound house. But ultimately, the cost of mucking it up, mucking it up, is also much much higher. Also, if I'm if I own a ten million pound house, I probably don't have the time to sell the property myself. So I'd end up putting it on the, pro putting it on the portals using an online agent and then hiring someone to, to market it for me anyway, which may be slightly less money than, than if I went with Stratton Parker or Knight Frank. Um, but ultimately, kind of, I'm still, I'm still gonna be paying a lot of money. I think, who are the biggest estate agent in London? Foxton's probably, as much as we all hate to say it. Who are the most expensive agent in London? Foxton's. So I think people do appreciate that if it's your large, largest financial asset, you need to look after it. And actually, the larger that asset is, the, biggest different, the bigger difference someone who's good or bad at selling it um, can make. Um, so personally I, personally, I think that the, the online space is quite niche. I, I do feel that they are strong-arming people into using their product with spend. 
um, they may they may evolve and become they may evolve and become better. Um, they may evolve and become just cheaper agents. Um, but uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Sorry about my voice, by the way. It's uh, picked a good time to go. Hi, Colby. Hi, Shiraz. <laughs> uh, a question on your view online. Um, and I know you are sales focused rather than looking at rental. Do you have a view on how the rental space may differ from the sales uh, space in terms of online uh, focus? Yeah, so, so for the benefit of everyone else, as Shiraz uh, mentioned, get agent, because we're data driven, the, only, the data is much better for sales than it is for lettings because you have the land registry and the, and the sales data on the portals is kept much more up to date. So we don't actually do lettings at all, so we don't have lettings data. Um, but I mean, I imagine it's the cost of getting it wrong is a lot less using doing rentals because it might be an extra 20 quid a month or, or, or 20 quid a month less. So probably using rentals is much better. I know George at Rentify is doing some interesting things as well. Um, I, I don't have the data to back it up, and so, so it's just my opinion. But I would say that I, me personally, I'd be much more likely to rent my property through an online agent than I would to, especially with things like Rajiv from Fixflow, these kind of things that help you with the management of the, of the property. I'd be much more likely to rent my property through an online agent than, uh, than sell my property through an online agent. Oh, no. Hi, uh, Adrian Black from U Home. Uh, how much value do you think the agent adds, the individual person in the transaction, and how much value do you think the firm adds in, in an agency? So how, how much yeah. for the Stratton Parker person, how much for Stratton Parker? Good question. So obviously as a company, we, we suggest branches to use. So we'll say use Stratton Parker in wherever. Um, use, use Foxtons in Islington, we'd never say that because they get a, a tiny proportion of the asking price. Um, but we never actually say use one particular person. There's two reasons. One, that data is not available. Two, the market's very different in the UK compared to somewhere like the States where um, what you'll find is that different people deal with the different parts of the sale. Um, so it's quite difficult to say this person's dealing with it or that person's dealing with it. Um, from my point of view, what I feel is that if you've got, if you've got a business that is constant, consistently overperforming, um, I think the chances are they've established a good culture, they've established uh, good um, structures there, uh, and, and good methods by which everyone follows, um, which lead to them consistently overperforming. So, so I think that it is important who you get, but I think that generally what you'll find is that you get lots of good people at a very good agent, rather than just one person and everyone else not being much caught. Are there any more questions? No? Just double checking. Okay, great. Could everybody please join me in thanking Colby? Thank you so much. It was great.